In this video, I'm taking you behind the scenes on a recent short film project called Reflections. I want to start off by giving a massive thanks to Nanlite for helping to make this project possible. For the film, they sent us a Nanlite Forza 500B 2. The B is the bi-colored version, so we have bi-color functionality and a very powerful light. And on top of that, they sent me a projector mount to go along with it, as well as a 120 parabolic softbox. Now we use this setup as our main key light throughout the film, but we'll get into more gear in just a moment. I also want to give a massive thanks to the crew, the talent in this film, did an incredible job and worked hard to get prepared for everything. Also want to give a massive thanks to the assistant and the photographer on set. You'll find everyone's information down below. Lastly, let's talk about the gear. Everything was shot on the Sony a7S 3 paired with the Atomos Ninja 5. And we shot everything on a 24 to 70 G Master 2. And we had this set up on a rig throughout to add some weight to the camera to help with the handheld shots which doubles as a nice monitor mount. Now we use the Atomos primarily for monitoring, but also to record ProRes RAW. And the main creative decision for this was to be able to control white balance in post as we had a lot of mixed lighting setups. And I didn't want to have to worry too much about dialing it in perfectly on the shoot. Now in terms of other lighting gear, I already owned a couple of 200Ds. So we used those as well as a Nanlite Pavo Tube 15C in some of the scenes. For the still shots, we used a small rig fluid head tripod and then we had some accessories like extension cords and a haze machine. So with the gear out of the way, let's start breaking down the film. I have my iPad here so I can kind of watch along with you guys. We have some diagrams of the different lighting setups and we're just going to walk you through how we did it. So the opening scene to the short film, uh, pretty simple here, natural light with no lighting modifiers. Uh, we had some different cloud coverage throughout the day and the opening scene was kind of mostly shaded. so. I felt okay with how it looked without trying to make any modifications to the light. And now we can go ahead and move into the first interior lighting setup. So we have the Forza 500 on a 36 inch softbox with a grid. And this is our main key light for the subject in this scene. If we take a look at the wider shot from the same setup, you can see that the light is off frame to the right. Throughout the entire film, I'm trying to maintain a backlit setup with the subject. I really like how it looks uh, with the upstage lighting or with the main key light backlighting the subject in a sense. So next to the softbox, we had a 200D on the projector mount. And this projector mount is what's creating the little streak of light that you see here. So it's pretending like the sunlight is coming through the shades and leaving a streak of light on the wall, which just adds a little bit of texture to the scene. And I think it looks really nice. Now we're gonna skip over the gym shots for now. We're gonna talk about those at the end. So the next interior shot that we have here in the home is uh, this little bathroom scene here. So this was just a simple one light setup. We are top lighting him with the Pavo tube. And I had this set to a low Kelvin temperature of about 2700 and I dialed the tint over to the green side. So it kind of creates this like eerie bathroom scene feel. And then we have the white balance on the camera set to uh, somewhere around four, I believe it was 4,500. So we get a little bit of color contrast between the hallway light and the bathroom. And just a single top light scene. And this is kind of meant to emulate the lights that are already present in the bathroom, which we had turned off. Now next up, we have this office scene here. Uh, we had a pretty simple setup. Again, just a one light setup for this. So all we did was we put the Forza 500 on the projector, pointed it behind the subject to cast another uh, light streak. Again, with the shade insert. And then our main key light is actually coming from the window that's in front of our subject and we had a negative card to block off the light on, his, on the left side of his face to help create a little bit of depth. So that was the lighting setup here. We closed the shade that's in front of the camera, but it's still giving our subject a little bit of backlight. So again, just a single spotlight here to create that texture on the wall. Now, moving forward, we have the night version of the office scene. Uh, nothing was changed about the lighting. We just dialed down the exposure on the camera and also turned the white balance all the way down. Now onto the bedroom scene. Here we actually used a practical as our key light and I turned the, bal the white balance way up on the camera in this scene. That light bulb is actually a, um, a very white color temperature, probably close to 5,000 Kelvin. So made it look a little bit more warm on the camera white balance settings. And there's some windows to the left of the frame that we covered with curtains. And then again, we brought in the projector mount with the Forza 500. And we set this to daylight, which with our camera settings makes it have that blue kind of coolish uh, look to it. Just a simple two light setup for this shot. And that's pretty much it. Next we have the shot of him eating inside. 
This was achieved by closing the shades behind the subject. Again, we turned down the exposure and dialed down the white balance in camera to get that moonlight kind of ambient look. And then the first artificial light in the scene is one of the 200Ds on a reflector dish bouncing off the ceiling. And this helps just to bring up the room tone a little bit. Uh, we set it to a daylight balance light to kind of match the light from the windows. So without this, it would have been very dark and there would have been pretty much no detail in the shadows. So this helps to bring up the room tone and give it a little bit of that ambient light as if the window light was spilling ambience into the room. And then finally, we have the Forza 500 on the 36 inch softbox. This is key lighting our subject and we match the color temperature to the practicals in the scene. So for me, this is a huge plus on the light, being able to change the color temperature to match either different practicals or different natural light that is happening in the scene. And I think it really helps pull this off and it makes the scene look realistic. Now moving on, we have a scene in which it kind of looks like our subject is um, sitting on the couch in the early morning or maybe late evening light. So we had a warm Kelvin temperature set on the camera and started with the natural light that was coming through the window. So we warmed it up a little bit in camera, but we noticed there wasn't quite enough light on his face particularly on the right side of his face. So what we did was we put the Forza 500 on a projector mount. We bounced that into a white card that's in the corner of the room. And that's what's creating the key light on his face, which is motivated by the window shade that's in frame. So in this case, it really helped to have the projector attachment. So we could focus that light on the white card and just give that little kicker that we needed as his key light. We added in a second light here, uh, just one of the 200Ds on a reflector dish to backlight our subject giving a little bit of kicker on the left side of his face with that hard light. And this is motivated by that window earlier in the film, which is now currently out of frame. So simple two light setup here, and we have it motivated from the outside light. We had the Kelvin temperature on both lights set to daylight 5600. And then again, we just warmed it up with the white balance adjustment. Now for this walking scene, again, we shot this in natural light. I'm still trying to stay backlit based on the position of the sun but the clouds were kind of acting as our diffusion, so I didn't feel the need to uh, use a diffuser or reflector here, even though I had them with me. Moving on, we have a scene. Again, this could be like late afternoon sun kind of spilling in through the windows. So we opened the shade that's in the frame, and then we left the practicals on, and we just had the Forza 500 on a softbox <clears throat> off camera left, and then this is giving our subject that key light. And I believe we had this set to daylight as well and we turned up the Kelvin temperature on the camera just slightly. Now for the gym scenes, we essentially used identical setups throughout while making small adjustments. And this is when we got out the 120 softbox, which is that big softbox, super soft source of light. And we paired that with the Forza 500 and a Pavo tube for the gym scenes. Now in terms of where we positioned this light, it was pretty much directly to the side of our subject and in some cases even a little bit behind them. So again, we're really leaning into upstage lighting and depending on whether it was a tight or wide, we had the softbox closer or farther away. And this is kind of motivated by the general ambience in the gym, but also the ceiling lights that you see in frame. And so I think it works really well just to have a little bit of depth on the subject and the Forza was perfect for that. Now we use the Pavo tube here off camera right to create a little backlight or hair light, which is motivating those ceiling lights. We use this exact same setup for all the gym scenes, like I said. Uh, sometimes we didn't use the Pavo tube, either the practicals were actually backlighting him or I just didn't feel like it was necessary. And this is where having the Forza 500 made a massive difference on this shoot. I turned down the exposure on the camera quite a bit so I wasn't blowing out either the window light that's visible in the background or I wasn't blowing out the practical overhead lights too much. But the main reason for turning down the exposure was that so those overhead lights weren't the main source of light on the subject. Uh, it doesn't look very good to have your subject top lit. So we kind of darkened him up by closing down the aperture on the camera and we brought in the Forza 500 and we either had it set at 40% or in some cases all the way up to 100% if it was really far away. And having a powerful light absolutely makes a huge difference when you're going for some of these creative looks. Now throughout the film, we had a 1 8 mist filter on the camera and in some of the interior shots earlier, we had an ND filter and we use an ND filter, of course, in all of the natural light scenes. And so as I'm going through these different gym shots, we either had the light to the left of him or to the right of him. And I positioned the camera either with practicals in the background or in some cases with a dark wall as a background, just to create a little bit of diversity between the shots. And I think that sums up the lighting approach to the short film. Again, we shot everything handheld and we had a storyboard for different shots that we wanted, as well as a rather extensive shot list. But I always do a certain level of 
improvisation whenever I'm shooting. So I liked to introduce a little bit of foreground into some of these shots. It adds even more depth to the scene and it keeps the shots looking different and unique. A good mix of tights, mediums, and wide as well. And having the ProRes RAW format was super helpful in post to be able to change that white balance and also changing the ISO a little bit as well. So I think that's gonna do it for the breakdown for this short film. If you guys enjoyed it, we'd really appreciate some feedback or thoughts in the comments. Drop any questions you might have as well and I'd be happy to answer those for you guys. Again, this would not have been possible without Nanlite. I highly recommend checking them out if you haven't already. I'm lighting this scene right now with the Forza 500 and I'm overall super impressed with the quality and service that they deliver. So that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys for sticking around and we'll see you next time.